Welcome to Breaking Down Bergman. I'm David Friend. I'm Sonia Strimban. And we are going to do a little bit of a different episode this week. We wanted to do a little precursor to what's to come over the next few months. Every year we have the Montreal World Film Festival that happens at the end of August. And this particular year there was a very special feature that came to Canada from director Diraj Akalkar, who brought a documentary featuring the life, relationship and films of Ingmar Bergman and Liv Allman. I have so many memories of an island. Almost 50 years of memories. I acted there, I directed there. My best friendships were grounded there. And for a time it was my home as well. It has been such an incredible part of my life. And I met Ingmar there. He changed my life. We actually found out about this movie when I was doing a Google News search on Ingmar Bergman. <laughs> we try to keep up to date on Ingmar Bergman developments because believe it or not there's still a lot going on with his career and it's hitting the news all of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and this one just happened to show up on Google News and it was the fact that the film was playing at the festival and that Liv Ullmann, one of the most famous actresses that ever worked with Bergman, um, was there to talk about the movie. And right when I saw it I thought, you know, Sonia, it would be really cool if we could head over to Montreal, which is about a six hour drive from here in Toronto, um, to meet Liv and talk to her, or at least to meet the director of this documentary and talk to him. Um, so I pitched it to Sonia kind of casually. And this was right before you were leaving on a trip to France. The timing was very unfortunate. So sadly, I wasn't in the country and I couldn't join David on the trip, but I was definitely rooting for him from across the Atlantic. Yeah, so this is how it played out. <laughs> Um, I talked to my, my employer who said, all right, we'll give you the day off. And I thought, okay, I got to plan this very strategically because I only have a 24 hour period with six hours each way. Somehow I had to fit in an interview and some transportation time within Montreal and get this all done, make sure it worked out. And still sound coherent and intelligent. That's a challenge sometimes. <laughs> so it was a very last minute thing. The bus was to leave at 9 AM from Toronto heading to Montreal. So the entire trip was very complicated and quite an adventure. And actually, I haven't told Sonia the details yet. It's been a few weeks, but I wanted to tell you in front of everyone so that everyone could know the story. Right. He held it hostage, seriously. I've tried every trick to get it out of him. It just would not work. Well, it's an interesting story. <laughs> and right from the beginning, it just had, there was a lot of trouble. Okay, we'll get to it. I'm dying oh, to know. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so I got a ticket for a bus on the way there to Montreal, six hours. It was to leave at 9 a.m. And the bus didn't leave at 9 a.m. Oh. Six, six hours, the theory was I would get there two hours early and arrive just in time to talk to leave for this 15, 20 minute period of time that they were going to give me. Mm -hmm. um, the bus was 45 minutes late. And so I finally got on the bus thinking everything's okay. And it was a pretty smooth trip on the mega bus from Toronto to Montreal. It was the discount bus. The other option was a $300 flight each way and... Fly. Always fly. Yes, but we're not... We're, this is a non-profit... Uh, Below profit is more like it. Yeah, okay. It costs <laughs> us money. But anyways, I didn't want to drop that much to do this as much as I wanted to talk to Leave. So I get on the bus. Everything seems to be going smoothly. Um, we're about four hours into the trip and um, the bus starts to sputter. The mega bus? The yeah. two-story bus? We were literally on a bridge just outside of Montreal, about 40 <laughs> minutes away, and the bus starts to sputter, and right before the bridge pulls over to the side of the road. Did it run out of gas? The engine just stopped. Oh my God. And there was that minute of time where everyone in the bus was just waiting, you know, that moment of confusion. And for me, a bit of a moment of panic, but keeping it together, because I didn't know really what was going on. And so 
they start the engine again and we get going and everyone's like yay woo! they're all celebrating that we're going again for about 30 seconds before it <laughs> sputters out and pulls over to the side of the oh road my God. the bus driver announces we have some problems with the bus uh it's we're gonna call in two more buses to pick you guys up because it's a double decker they didn't have any more double deckers um but the wait is going to be about two hours <laughs> so shoot <laughs> the that was the moment where i started to panic a little bit because i'm doing the calculations on my watch thinking no Leave, way. Leave isn't happen. waiting around, right? Yeah. She doesn't really know what breaking down Bergman is. She's not exactly eagerly sitting in Montreal going, I hope I really get to talk to this guy doing this YouTube series on a director that <laughs> Come I... Come on, we're classy. <laughs> <laughs> so after the shock wore off and a lot of people started talking, there was a girl there that was like, I need to make my 6 p.m. Greyhound bus from Montreal to elsewhere. And so we all started conspiring to get our own taxi cab. And so five of us walked down the road, got a cab. The cab took about 45 minutes to get there. Of course, I'm really watching the clock now because time is running out. Literally. So we're going along the highway, everything seems to be going okay until there's an accident that shuts down the highway and we're stuck in traffic. And the girl beside me is panicking because her 6 p.m. bus is leaving at 6 p.m. And I'm panicking because my 10 to 5 interview is a lot closer than her 6 p.m. bus. We eventually get into the city. He drops everyone off. I'm the last one in the Why in were the you van. the last one? I don't know. Because <laughs> nobody else seemed to realize the urgency of this interview. You should have just said that your dad was having open heart surgery or something. Or that you were late for an adoption interview. Or, you know. That, that would have been creative. And I didn't think of that at the time, Sonia. Seriously, what is wrong with the world? What is wrong with the world? So we get to the hotel, the guy drops me off. And at this point, I had already been getting phone calls from the uh, gentleman who works at the Montreal World Film Festival who arranged this interview for us and was so kind to do so. He's kind of panicking because I, I, you know, I laid it out for him ahead of time that I'm going to be taking this bus and arriving in the city. And of course, I'm already two hours late oh for this interview and he's going well leave is waiting here for you are you close <laughs> oh my god and I, i'm saying literally i'm in the cab and i'm on my way and he's like how far are you I, i'm like i'm pulling up to the building and he's and so i get into the building and i can't find anybody so there's this whole 10 minute race around before uh. i finally round a corner and there's leave which was really cool because she was totally laid back and was calm. she really gracious about it she was really gracious because they went up to her and said he's been uh, on a bus on his way from Toronto and she used to live in Canada so really? yeah when? So she, uh, a long time when she was a lot younger oh, um, I didn't know that but she didn't seem to remember the distance between the cities but she seemed rather impressed that we came all that way to do this interview but she also didn't know what the series was apparently the word was that I was gonna have half an hour we'd leave before this huge delay mm -hmm. because they were gonna give me a window before mm -hmm. the window that we had and instead, I ended up getting about 15 minutes with her, which was tough because I wanted to really delve into questions about her relationship with Bergman. And of course, in 15 minutes, you're setting up your camera and you're, um. you're wanting to sort of, you know, create some, some relationship between you and Leave in that little amount of time. Mm -hmm. So that didn't work out so well, but we did get the interview, which you haven't seen yet. Not a minute. I've been holding it back. And uh, we did get the interview with Diraj, the director, um, talking about it. And mm -hmm. they did their interview separately. So the way that we're going to post it is we'll put up Diraj's interview first, where he's talking about working on the documentary. And then we'll follow it up with the Liv Ullman interview, which will appear sometime around when we start discussing her films, which start with Persona. So that was the adventure into the city. That sounds highly unpleasant. And if it was me, I probably would have fainted at some point from stress or killed everyone in the cab. So she was really kind in terms of actually waiting and, and being gracious about the fact that we, you really held her up. But how was she otherwise? Did she seem reluctant to share details or was she open about things or? Well, one of the really cool things, and I don't think we actually caught this on video, was that I was explaining to her the series and uh, I said it was on YouTube and she looked over to uh, one of her friends who was with her and she said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be on YouTube. This is my first time on YouTube. <laughs> and everyone sort of looked at her and they said, 
Lee, if you've been on YouTube for years, there's clips of all of your interviews, and she, she looked at me and she said, frankly, I don't use computers, um, I don't know anything about YouTube other than that it exists, and uh, she was a little bit reluctant, I think. To be on YouTube? To, to be, be on, broadcast to on be YouTube, on YouTube she, I don't think she fully knew what she was involved in with this mm -hmm. project because I did explain it to her, but you're kind of throwing this project yeah. in, into her lap and saying, all right, this is what it is, go, tell us yeah. about your life. The, the interview questions weren't as deep as I had hoped. And she talked to me about um, how Ingmar might have perceived this current world we live in in terms mm -hmm. of media, in terms of mm -hmm. social media like YouTube mm -hmm. and Facebook. Um, so it was a little insightful in that respect, mm -hmm. so I think that was a new perspective. But I did want to really get in depth into their relationship on screen in particular mm -hmm. and how it had worked. And I didn't really get a chance to do that because they did, they did cut off the interview. They, yeah. 15 minutes, time is up. But do you feel that maybe some of that information can be gleaned from the documentary itself? Yeah, the documentary was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Actually, after, uh, after I did the interview, I had a chance to watch the documentary in a screening room. and. I have to say I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. The structure of the film is told in a way, it starts with their relationship and ends with his death. So mm -hmm. it focuses specifically on that period of their lives. Um, but it tells part of the story through interviews with Lee. But it also uses clips from Ingmar Bergman's films in which she starred in to sort of illustrate the story. Mm -hmm. And it was very interesting how Diraj you know, pick little tidbits out of Bergman films and really show how this relationship developed mm -hmm. and some of the more troubling times that they had and some of the great times that That's they That's fascinating. Had. I'm looking forward to seeing it. What value do you think this will really add to our overall project? Well, I think that was the question in doing it because it was quite a task to get there mm -hmm. and we didn't really know what we were going to get. And what to expect, yeah. Right. And so, in some ways, it just adds on to this growing project that we have that has sort of become more than just mm -hmm. watching the movies but also sort of capturing this moment in time as we film mm -hmm. this project in you know 2011, 2012, 2013. While he's not making more films, there are a lot of people that are discovering him and we've had a couple people suggest on our YouTube videos that, that there might be a revival in Bergman's career right now and the interest from a lot of people who mm -hmm. might have not been Bergman fans previously. Um, so I think it's kind of important to capture what's going on in this moment in time, as we did with the Demon Theater video. I mean, these right. guys are doing this now. We don't know how long they'll be doing it, but they are doing it today. And mm -hmm. if we don't capture it, then... It might be gone. Right. And so at the same time, Leave it says in the film, in the documentary, I'm reaching my later years. Mm -hmm. And she sort of sums up her life and, ha and her relationship with Ingmar, who mm -hmm. she talks about his death as well. Uh, one day she's going to be gone and we will not have had this opportunity to talk with her. Now mm -hmm. I wish that I was able to ask some better questions than I did, but the fact is we did get a chance to speak with her and we even got a chance for her to know about Breaking Down Bergman. And she's going to be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yes, more leave videos on YouTube. I think we're very lucky that we had this opportunity. And so we're looking forward to sharing those interviews with you over the coming months. The first one will appear with Diraj soon, followed by Leaf. So keep your eye on the page, or if they're already available, the links will be right down there. So check them out, and we will see you on the next episode of Breaking Down Bergman.